Hello guys and welcome back to the Eat Like Ruby podcast. I am back today with another solo episode. So last week I did a solo episode and this one is kind of going to flow on from that. So if you haven't listened to that, I would definitely do so. You can listen to today's episode first, like it's not going to matter too much about the order, but they're definitely going to tie in with each other. So I would absolutely put that on your to listen or to watch list if you haven't already. But last week I spoke about one of my upcoming programs called Train Like Queens, but more so the reason why I've built that program and the reason why I want to run that program and even why I want to run it at this particular time of year. I spoke a lot about that last week, so I'm not going to get too into that today. But last week was a lot about the why, like why am I doing that? Um, And I just wanted to bring people's attention to that topic. Like I said last week, whether you actually applied for that program and you come into that program or whether you just start thinking about those things for yourself personally, I just really wanted to bring attention to that. And today I'm going to speak a little bit more about like the next steps, sort of if we want to think about it as last week being the why and this week starting to be a little bit about the how. So the first thing I want to say here is there may be some points today that you've heard in other episodes or if you're in the Eat Like Ruby world in other ways, like masterclasses, live calls, all of those things, there may be some pieces here that you're like, oh, I've heard her say this before, but I'm going to really tie a lot of it in together today. And one of the first things you guys would have heard me say for sure before, we sort of tend to see people fall into two categories, or I tend to see people fall into two categories in the Eat Like Ruby world. The first category being people that don't love nutrition and training, and they just want to get a little bit of knowledge and enough advice and enough guidance to just maybe lose a little bit of weight or feel a little bit better and get on with their life. I am all for this. If somebody comes to me and is like, I actually don't really like gym, don't really like this lifestyle, just give me the bare minimum so I can be in good health and feel good enough about myself. I'm like, amen, sister, you do you. (laughs) And then the other sort of group of girls we see are the girls that do love this stuff. It is very much just a natural focus and priority they make it their lifestyle because they just genuinely enjoy training, usually gym, tracking their food or being mindful of their food. And it just comes quite natural to them. They're just like, yeah, I actually really like this stuff. And again, I love this. Like again, you do you, (laughs) but I love working with these girls. And I actually love working with either one of these girls. The main thing that I always want to point out to people here is like I always say, there's no right or wrong. We don't have to be either one of these categories. We want to be really aware of what category we are. We don't want to feel like maybe we fall a little bit more into category one of not not loving this and not caring too much, but feeling like we have to, being like, oh, like I should love gym or I should love tracking my food or following a meal plan. And really, if you just genuinely don't, you kind of fall into that cycle of like, you know, I'm being bad because I don't love this and I don't prioritize it. I always want people to really meet themselves where they're at and have that honest conversation with themselves of like, where do I actually fall here? Because when you work that out, you can then work out the best plan to suit you. If you're aiming for a plan that really just doesn't align with your likes, your preferences, your lifestyle, your focus, your priorities, and you're constantly doing that, it's a recipe for disaster. It really is. And I'm sure a lot of people listening can probably relate to that. Like, yeah, I have probably overcommitted, convinced myself I should do something or, or, you know, I like doing this when maybe I really don't. This isn't actually what I want to speak about today, but I always just want people to think about that first. Have a really good think to yourself and just be like, where do I fall here? Because when you know that, You can seek the right advice, the right education, the right program for you and actually succeed with the best thing for you as opposed to, you know, what you think you quote should be doing. In today's episode and in last week's episode, I want to speak a little bit more to that second category, the girls who love this and they want to get after it. And even if that's not you, I still feel like you will gain some benefit from this combo. It's just things we want to think about a little bit few little mindset shifts we want to make, just really starting to embrace this whole journey a little bit more. And um, I'm going to get into it and you guys will understand a bit more (laughs) what I'm saying. So in last week's episode, I did speak about Train Like Queens being that upcoming program. And really what that is, it's a four month program where the girls that are coming into it are prioritizing nutrition and training. They've got a bit of experience. Often these girls 
diet for fat loss very, very well. And then when it comes to stepping away from a fat loss phase, there's either a level of fear, maybe there's a level of confusion, there's some resistance because a lot of us think that, you know, fat loss is the be all and end all and I need to always be lean or I need to always be pushing hard or whatever that thought is. It might be a little bit different for everyone, but the real underlying theme is like, yes, I can kill it in a fat loss phase. And then when I move away from that, I I can't kill it as much for whatever reason for that individual. And that's why I've wanted to build this program. And I guess just as a little bit of a side note, if you haven't listened to last week's episode, the whole sort of reason and, and aim of this program is that we spend four months out of a calorie deficit and we're simply focusing on like performance in the gym, eating a little bit more, possibly changing our shape, building some muscle if that's direct the direction that we want to go, but really just committing to that time away from a strict calorie deficit. We don't want to spend all year in a deficit. I'm not going to get into that combo again. I feel like I've hopefully convinced you guys of that enough that you're open-minded to this. But usually then what I see is people being like, okay, cool. I've heard Ruby say it. I get it. Like it does make sense. But actually stepping over that line and being like, okay, yes, I will definitely spend some time away from this is where people struggle. And last week we touched on the fact that people want to do it. They start doing it. They freak out. They go back to the deficit. They pull themselves back out of that and they get stuck in this loop where it's sort of like, I want to, but I don't know. I'm scared. It feels weird. It's uncomfortable. And then we sort of see this period of a few months where we haven't really done anything because we've kept chopping and changing the plan. Essentially, this program is four months where we're just focusing on other things like like I said, performing really well in the gym, training really well, creating better shape in our body, building a bit of muscle if we want to go to that extent of actually putting on some muscle and some size or somewhat maintaining weight for the most part, but really optimizing training, really optimizing our shape and all of those things because we're simply eating enough to do so. If you are someone who is up to date with episodes, you're probably sitting there thinking, here she goes again, I've heard all this before. (laughs) I sort of want to speak today about like the next step, like, okay, where do we go from here? If we're getting it, but we're still feeling a little bit of resistance. (laughs) So one thing you guys might have heard me say before in different ways, but it applies here too, is I never ever want girls in Eat Like Ruby to rely on the mindset and the wording of, you know, air quotes, hopefully. And what I mean by this is people saying like, hopefully I can stick to something. Hopefully everything works out for me. Hopefully I see this result. Hopefully I get progress, whatever it might be. And we see this a lot when people are focusing on fat loss. They'll be like, you know, hopefully I can stick to my calories this week. Hopefully I lose weight this week. And the reason I really hate this, honestly, (laughs) is because the more education and understanding we have, the less we need to rely on hopefully. We don't have to hope for anything. We know how to achieve things. So again, the more education and the more we know, the more we remove that hope and simply say, well, okay, if I do want to achieve X, Y, the X, Y, Z this week, how do I do it? What do I do about it? It's not a like, hopefully I can do it. It's a, I know how to do it. Let's actually do it. And so coming back to this program and people just spending time away from a deficit, people get into the mindset of like, hopefully I don't feel too shit. Hopefully I can stick with it. First of all, if your mind goes there, just know that it makes sense and it's very common. If you're someone who's been quite lean and you're in quite good shape for the most part, it's natural that you're like feeling a bit of resistance to changing that, changing your plan, possibly changing your outcomes, whatever it is, and feeling like, shit, I hope I don't feel too crappy. (laughs) Like that makes sense. And it's like anything in life. When you go and do something for the first time, you're going to have that underlying thing of like, fuck, hopefully this feels all right. (laughs) So I don't want to shame people for feeling that way. So the thing I want people to start thinking about instead, I see this with the word hopefully, and I see this with willpower as well. People will say like, I just need to have willpower or even like, hopefully I can have willpower. That's the double whammy. I want people to switch up their thoughts a little bit and transcend this, you know, hopefully thing, because hopefully is quite an outsource when we think about it. You're you're kind of saying in a subconscious way, this is not up to me. If you're like, hopefully this works out, hopefully everything goes to plan, like hopefully I can do my meal prep, whatever it is, you're somewhat saying it's not up to me if this goes to plan. It's not up to me if I can do my meal prep. I want people or women, especially girls in the Eat Like Ruby world 
to transcend that sort of thinking and really like elevate your thoughts and even elevate your own self-belief. And instead of it being like, hopefully I can do this, switching that up to being like, I'm actually like a badass bitch who (laughs) is committed to myself and my goals and my growth so much that I'm willing to sit in this discomfort of doing something new. If you're hearing that thinking, shit, here she goes. (laughs) That's probably true. Here she does go. But honestly, I think it's such a default for us to just outsource that power, like I said, and just really kind of dabble in those surface level thoughts of like, oh yeah, maybe that does sound good, but you know, that's always been quite hard for me. And, you know, hopefully maybe I could give it a go. The real underlying thing here and the thing I want to get across and probably the reason I'm going to get all fired up is because like I said, can it be like, actually I'm a badass bitch. I have so much belief in myself. I do not have to rely on hopefully I am going to back myself and do something new and do something somewhat scary and possibly sit in a level of discomfort do something I've never done before and be okay. I actually back myself and I know I've got myself and I can do this. (laughs) And I see this in so many ways. Like I said, people will play that hopefully piece a lot. People will use the willpower thing, even when it's like, you know, I'm going to this event and I need to have willpower. Can we stop the whole like, I need willpower and can it be like, this is actually an opportunity for me to prove to myself that I can do this, for me to actually step up and work towards my goals. We say we want all these things, whether it's a body composition goal, a performance goal, a physique goal, like whatever it is, a habit goal, a mindset shift. We say we want all these things. And then anytime we're presented with an opportunity, we see it as a challenge. It's more like, shit, this is a challenge and a, you know, quote, test of willpower. Is it a test of willpower or is it an opportunity to actually take yourself to the level that you want to go to? Mic drop. (laughs) what I'm getting at here with the whole train like queens and moving away from a deficit and all of these things I touched on it last week and I want to make it super clear I am never going to bring girls into a program (laughs) where it's like we are going to push you to such a level of discomfort that you feel like shit that is never ever the aim with a muscle gain goal if we were seeing things just continuously move in a direction that we don't want to go and we're putting on unnecessary levels of body fat we will absolutely intervene and and change that. And even prior to that, we're going to set a plan where we think we're going to find the sweet spot of like, yes, training is optimized. Yes, body comp is going to be optimized. But equally, we're not just eating a lot and, and pushing to a point where we feel like shit and we're, you know, quote, bulking or blowing out in a way we don't need to. So I always want to make that really clear to people. I think a lot of people think if I'm not doing fat loss and pushing a deficit, the only option is to go complete other way and start to pack on weight and feel like shit. There's very rarely times in life and in nutrition and training where we need to just pack on weight unless somebody is actually underweight and we need to do that. But if you're sort of in that sweet spot where you don't need to lose weight for health reasons, um, but equally you don't need to gain weight for health reasons, really we want to find a sweet spot with a nutrition intake for you that's like enough coming in that Hunger feels great. Cravings feel great. Energy feels amazing. Training performance is fucking wicked. That's the real point here. So much so that we can stick with all of this consistently. We're then obviously pushing wicked weights in the gym. We're pushing wicked training. And therefore, we're seeing body composition progress because there's enough energy and there's really wicked quality training to make that happen. But we haven't pushed that so far that we're just packing on unnecessary weight. So I always want to make that clear. When we talk about discomfort, it's not like, Let's just blow you out to the most uncomfortable spot and (laughs) you just have to learn to sit there. That is never the point. But usually anybody that has attempted this themselves or even with a coach will know we can feel that level of discomfort. If we're so used to pushing fat loss, you know, quote, be good, be lean, be light, whatever it is, there is a level of resistance when we say, okay, we're intentionally not going to do that now. Like the, the first sort of discomfort, if you will, is just, making the decision to actually move away from that. Like that's so foreign to so many people. And then the second thing is when we start doing it, you might just have those days where you wake up and you're like, oh shit, don't feel that great today. And this is where I see people come undone because they're like, shit, don't feel great. Change the whole plan, run back to my deficit, change my goals. (laughs) And that's where things really come undone. And that's why I said last week, that's why I've built this program because I want people to have a space when they wake up on those days to be like, oh shit, guys, 
I'm feeling it. And you know, you've got a group of badass women that maybe are feeling it too. Maybe they felt it yesterday. I've definitely felt it before. And we all tap in when, and we're like, yo, I've got you. You've got a bigger goal. Sit in, it, sit in this discomfort. You know that future you will be so thankful for what you're doing right now. And when we think about all of this stuff, one thing I see that's really common, and I'm, I'm going to get into this in a few ways in a minute, but one thing I see that's really common, even this week, like two days ago was International Women's Day. <laughs> and we see everybody getting behind other women. Like, she's a badass. She does this. Chicks are killing it. Rah, rah, rah. And then when it comes to ourselves, it's like, oh, no, yep, I couldn't do that. And it's like, we back each other in so many ways. Do we back ourselves? I would really look at that and think like, am I out here cheering all my sisters on, cheering all the gals on? And then anytime there's a level of discomfort or something, I'm straight away like, shit, I can't handle this. Get me out of it. I want every single female (laughs) listening to this to just think, shit, do I do this? Am I actually a little bit more of a badass bitch than I'm giving myself credit for? And it's actually time for me to step into that. Whether that is with a muscle gaining phase, whether that is with a nutrition and training goal, or whether it's with anything in life, I don't even care. Never join an Eat Like Ruby program if you don't want. I don't care. But I want every single female that listens to this to just think, oh, am I out here cheering everyone else on, backing everyone else, but not giving myself the same belief and the same credit because this is really what this comes down to. We see this where it comes back to the hopefully thing and all that where it's just like, oh, hopefully I could do it. I genuinely believe, you know, Sally over here, she would fucking kill it, but hopefully I can do it because I don't genuinely believe I would kill it. And that's what I want people to change. Change that thought and be like, yeah, I actually could, whatever the goal is in life, start tapping into that a little bit more. And with all of that, guys, like I say all of this with love and from a positive place, you might be like, oh shit, I feel a little attacked, but please know I'm attacking in a good way (laughs) because I love seeing girls step up that bit more, especially obviously with nutrition and training, because that's what I do. And I genuinely believe when girls get to a point of feeling good about their nutrition and training, like feeling in control of it, feeling quite good with my body, feel like I can take this any direction. I think that is life-changing. I absolutely do. And that's why I'm so passionate about it. You know, if I could have one wish, every female or every person in the world really would have that confidence, like the education and the confidence to control their health and their body composition, because I think that in turn would optimize people's like mental health, physical health, everything else so much more. So please know that when I get all fired up and I get super passionate about it, it's because I want girls to embrace this stuff and really take it to that next level. And the little thing I want to think about, like I want you guys to think about here, like I said, that other, that what I just said came from love. This one is a little bit of a dig in the nicest way possible. But (laughs) When we talk about this stuff, we've talked about this before and we've coined that term like gym baddie. Like I'm a gym baddie. I'm a badass in the gym. I get after it. I love it. If you've heard that and you've thought, oh yeah, I think that's me. Like that applies to me. What I would ask you to ask yourself or what I would tell you to ask yourself is, can I actually be a gym baddie and embrace all of these things and really take all of this shit to the next level? Or do I just want to be a gym baddie when it comes to looking the part and being like a fitspo? Do I want to be like, oh, there's that girl in the gym and, you know, she's in good shape and she kills it and she's got her shit together. Do I just like the image of that or am I actually willing to take my mindset, my actions, my habits, my efforts, my thoughts, all of those things to that same place? Is it just a surface level like, oh yeah, I look like a gym baddie or are you actually fucking a gym baddie? That is what you got to ask yourself. And when we start to think about all this stuff, I'll I'll come back to being nice now. I've had my dig. (laughs) But when we start to think about all this stuff, really what it all starts to come down to, guys, is embracing a whole new journey. For so many of us, we've, we've done the same thing for a long time. Like we've trained the same way, we've eaten the same way, we've had the same thoughts, we've had the same habits and all of that. And those things may be serving you very well. If you are somebody who can relate to all this stuff in terms of prioritizing nutrition and training, I would absolutely say those things are serving you to some extent. Like you're probably in good shape, you're probably in good health. 
But what we tend to see there is it becomes a little bit stagnant. Like, yes, you're in good shape and yes, you're training quite well and yes, you're eating quite well. But when we step back and we look at that loop we've spoken about before where we kind of kill it with fat, or we do, sorry, kill it with fat loss at times, but then we kind of can't kill it with anything else and then we come back to fat loss and then we kind of fall off and all of that. When we step back and look at that loop, there is a, a level there of being stagnant because we're not really embracing going into a new phase. Like we're not embracing a like maintenance slash performance phase. We're not embracing a muscle gain phase, whatever it is. Again, that even comes back to sort of changing the mindset instead of it being like, oh, this is a challenging new thing for me, or this is a level of discomfort for me. Can it just be like, I'm going to embrace a new phase? I know I can kill it with fat loss. I know I can kill it with, you know, anything you've killed it with before, but can I actually just step into a new phase and have it be an opportunity to learn? Maybe there'll be some trial and error. Maybe there will be some rough days, but like, can that be okay? Can it be okay that I'm stepping into this new thing? There is maybe a little bit of fear. There maybe is a little bit of resistance, but does that have to be a bad thing? If we think about any single thing in life, anytime we did it for the first time, there was some level of resistance or fear for most things. So, If we turn and run at the first sign of that and go back to what feels comfortable, that is literally what stagnancy is. We don't actually know if stagnancy is a word, but we're going to roll with that. But that's really what being stagnant is because like I said, you're you're edging into something new and anytime it doesn't feel good, you run back to, to what does feel good and therefore what is comfortable, what is normal, what you've been doing all along. And this is where we can see girls when we bring it back to nutrition and training not really ever changing their physique the way they want to because they are quite lean, they are quite light, they're in, you know, quote, good enough shape. And I don't want to bash that at all. Someone's in good shape. Like, again, amen, sister. (laughs) But if you're relating to all of this and you're like, I really wish I could change my shape a bit more. I wish I could build a bit more muscle in my legs or my shoulders or my glutes or anything like that. And you're struggling to really to do that on that next level. This is usually why, because we run back to the safety net of not eating too much or not pushing a gaining phase or whatever it is. And one thing that ties in so well with this, and we've pretty much come back to speaking about this in every single episode, is weight, scale weight. And we've spoken about this so much, so I'm not going to harp on about it too much. But this is where, if you are in this position, especially like I said before, where you do not need to gain weight or lose weight for a health reason. This is where we need to remove that surface level thought of weight and really start tapping into like, what is the goal? Is there a physique goal? Is there a performance goal? Is there a strength goal? Is there a certain PB I'm trying to hit? Especially, am I trying to gain muscle? Because if we look at that for one second, if you want to gain something on your body, you want that weight to go up. And this is where we see such a cock block when people are so adamant on just looking at weight because again, they almost sort of run back to what keeps them at a quote safe weight. And therefore like they're not really looking at like, is that weight actually where I'm going to achieve these other goals that I have? And if you can relate to this, like I think I've I've definitely said this in other places before, but if you can relate to that, that's so common. It it was so normal for years to just simply be like, lighter is better. You know, scale goes down good, scale goes up bad. Like so many people were just conditioned to think that for such a long time. So if you can relate to that and and you've got thoughts like that at times, just know that I'm not shaming that or you shouldn't be shaming that. Like it's so normal. It's so common. It's so expected. But again, this is where we need to start elevating our own thoughts and thinking like, well, if I do have a certain physique goal, does it actually matter what I weigh or do I need to start looking at that part of my physique? So if somebody was like, you know, I really want to build my glutes, it's like, do we need to actually even give a fuck about what you weigh or do we need to start looking at your glute training and then start looking at your glutes week after week, month after month? If someone has a goal to, you know, build their shoulders, same thing. We look at the shoulder sessions and then we look at how the shoulders progress, like throw the scales out at this point. It's so not a reflection of the things we're actually trying to work on. Again, I'm not going to harp on about the weight thing because we've just done that so much. This is where we need to really tap into like, what is the goal outside of weight? 
And I feel like maybe it's just the girls in my world because they've heard it for so long, but I feel like this shift is starting to happen. Like a lot of girls in Eat Like Ruby, the girls that are in Eat Like Queens right now, which is becoming Train Like Queens for the next round, are are starting to see this a little bit more, which is really cool. Again, it's something that for most of us has just been the same way for our whole life, like just looking at scale weight and having those really surface level thoughts about them. If you can relate to that, that's totally normal. But this is where like the time is, you know, now we want to just start looking at like, what else is there? Like, what is the actual goals here? What is the actual aim here? What do I actually care about here as opposed to the number? And I feel like it just comes back to what I was saying about being like a badass. If you actually want to be like a badass bitch in the gym, that's like lifting, killing it, like just absolutely killing it. Do we want to be, you know, waking up and being like, hopefully I'm lighter today. Who actually gives a fuck if we're lighter today? And if we really think about that, it's like tying in all those things I've said, like hopefully, and you know, I'm going to base everything on this scale weight number. Like it's just so irrelevant. And, And when I just think about the girls that I work with and I'm like, I just want you guys on this next level where you're just feeling good and training good and eating good and just killing it. And it's like, are the girls that are feeling this way and killing it in this way, having these thoughts of, hopefully I'm lighter tomorrow. No way. Like hold yourself to a higher standard, higher thoughts, better things. Don't think like, hopefully I'm lighter tomorrow in terms of like, again, coming back, it's almost an outsource. Like, you know, quote, hopefully everything works out in my favor. And when I jump on the scale, I see a number that's 200 grams lower than yesterday. Who cares? Like have a more meaningful, more purposeful goal. This is where I want people to start thinking like, not hopefully am I lighter tomorrow, but rather what can I do today to make sure I have a wicked day of eating and a wicked night's sleep. So when I wake up tomorrow, I can hit a hundred kilo hip thrust. Like think about those two different thoughts. Hopefully I'm lighter tomorrow versus what can I do today for myself and my goals to hit a triple digit hip thrust tomorrow? Which one of them is the more of a gym baddie? Which one of them is more of a badass bitch? Which one of them is International Women's Day, let's get it girl vibes. That's what we want to think about. It's just a whole different energy. It's a whole different thing. You know, I think you guys are getting it. I think we've been harping on for weeks now and months now and you guys are getting it. But I think it can be one of those things where it's like, oh, it's easier said than done. And I want to just give you guys a really clear example and just something that I've been going through. I think it's really cool to bring you guys somewhat along on my own journey. And you guys would have heard me talking about my own weight at times on the podcast. And if you haven't, just as a really quick reference, when I'm like super lean, light, shredded, absolutely dieted down the most that I can be and the most that I do is usually around the 57 or 58 kilo mark with my weight. And like I said, it's lean, it's light, it's shredded. When I am going the total opposite weight and intentionally gaining weight and gaining muscle and in a surplus, it's usually around the 67 to 68 mark. So it's about a 10 kilo difference there. Right now, I actually didn't take weight all year. And I think I've mentioned that to you guys, but I did take it this week because we did the 10,000 calorie challenge. So (laughs) if you uh, don't follow along on YouTube, definitely check that out because we did attempt to eat 10,000 calories the other week. Um, And I wanted to take weight to see like, where was it at? What happened after the, the big day of eating and all of that. But my point here is, when I took it, it was around the 61 to 62 kilo mark. And I thought that that's where it would be. Just knowing myself and knowing my body, I wasn't overly shocked at all to see that number, which is cool. And one thing I said to Shaq was, when you think about it, I was, I dieted down in November last year for a photo shoot. I said to Shaq, I was around 57 or 58 kilos at that time. And I never, ever trained in the gym in a crop top. And I was like, think about it. When did you ever see me training in a crop top? And he's like, nah. And I was like, if anything, I was actually wearing like baggy t-shirts And he's like, yeah, that's actually so true. And now around this 61, 62 kilo mark, like I actually cannot keep my shirt on. I'm always training (laughs) in a crop top. And I was just talking to him about it and saying it's so interesting because when I am down at that really low weight, I actually feel somewhat scrawny and skinny and I don't love my physique. And I don't want to shame anybody that weighs any of these numbers. I don't want to shame myself. (laughs) Like obviously I do that intentionally, but just as a whole, rather than like nitpicking the numbers or nitpicking what phase am I in, simply saying to myself, like, 
do I feel good training in a crop top today? Yeah, I do. And I'm actually right now, it's probably four kilos heavier than my like leanest, lightest self. And I just think it's so interesting to think about that because a lot of time we do have that association with like leaner and lighter is better. And I think we just need to embrace that. And I'm, I just want to point out that I am embracing it. Like I feel great at this weight and I'm not going to harp on about this too much, but I think it's just so interesting to think like when I was, you know, quote, shredded and lean, whatever you want to call it, I was a little bit more self-conscious. I was like, oh, I'm just going to wear a baggy t-shirt because I feel a bit scrawny and whatever. Like I definitely, I'm not going to say I looked bad or anything. That's not my point, but I actually just feel way more confident and comfortable at this current weight. So I think that's just a little interesting side note. One thing I want to point out, and I would actually really advise you guys to think about this if you don't already, I'd be interested to know if other people do this because I do it all the time. When I see girls in the gym, no matter what size they are, I think they look great. I'm not even kidding. Hand on my heart. I see so many chicks in the gym every day and I'll just be like, fuck, she looks good in the least weirdo way, but like, (laughs) I will see girls who are like really like hippie and curvy, like bigger lower bodies. And I'm like, shit, you've got the most wicked shape in your lower body. I'll see chicks that are like jacked, like shredded, big upper body, like lean as arms and delts. And I'm like, shit, you look good. Like I see chicks that are probably like 15 kilos heavier than me. And I'm like, you just look so good. Like you are just your outfit looks good. You look like a baddie when you're lifting that weight, like you're just pulling it off. And I think it's just so interesting to start to tap into that yourself and be like, what do I actually think like looks good? Not just in terms of seeing somebody and being like, oh, they have a good body. But like when you see people who are, you know, quote, killing it in your opinion, what actually is it about them? Like, is it their confidence? Is it their body shape? Is it the weight that they're lifting? Is it like how hard they're smashing it in the gym? Like whatever it is that you're looking at, whether it's on the internet or in the actual gym, people you know, what is it about these people that makes you be like, shit, she's a badass? Because I actually think, and I can say 100% for myself, very rarely is it, fuck, that chick is so lean and shredded and skinny. So she looks great. Like very rarely do I think that, and I'm not saying that the chicks who look like that, uh, (laughs) there's anything wrong with them. Like they definitely look great too. But I see so many shapes, sizes, strengths, whatever in the gym and just think like looking good, you know, quote, looking good and looking fit, looking healthy, looking strong, whatever can look like so many different things. And I think it's absolutely worth really starting to think about what is that to me? What do I think looks good? Who am I impressed by? Like, what do I see in the gym and think, shit, she's she's awesome. I want to do that. Because it's probably not the chicks that are super lean, shredded and light. It might be. But equally, it might be other chicks that are like way curvier and they're over there doing like a hundred kilo deadlift. And you're like, well, shit, I wouldn't mind doing that either. <laughs> like, So I really hope that makes sense, but I think it's cool. And if we think about people's bodies, like <laughs> I'm trying to think of like celebrities or whatever. Kimmy K, perfect example. If you think about Kimmy K, I actually have no idea what she would weigh or whatever, but she's probably, I would say she's heavier than me. I don't know. I'd actually love to know what Kim K weighs, <laughs> but I would say she's heavier than me. She's probably heavier some of, heavier than some of you guys or whatever. She looks amazing. And whether you think that or not is probably just backs up my point. I think she looks amazing. <laughs> some people might be like, no, that's actually not the body type that I love or whatever. But my point here is we don't actually give a shit what Kim K weighs. We think she looks awesome. So, and, and there'd be millions of things. Think about athletes as well. So often we see athletes on the TV, like, I don't know, tennis players or swimmers or runners, like runners have wicked legs. I reckon I, I love (laughs) chicks with muscly legs. I think it looks so cool. Um, but that's kind of what I'm getting at is like, we have no idea what these people weigh. And these people probably aren't the leanest, lightest, most shredded version of themselves, but they still look fucking great. And they're still in good health and they're in good weight ranges and they're fit and they're healthy. And a lot of them are strong. And this is the shit we need to tap into. Like, really start just having a look around. Like I said, whether it's on the internet, I feel like the internet years ago was just shredded people. Like 
everyone's feed was full of like those real fits bro like shredded looking people and I feel like that has changed so much over the years and that's even one thing to you know probably a big side note but if your Instagram feed is full of these shredded bodies still like maybe it's just that mine isn't full of this anymore because I have unfollowed or whatever but have a look at like what is the shit you're taking in like what are the images you're exposed to what are the videos you're exposed to and is it actually appealing to you and don't just have that sort of surface level of like oh yeah well they're fit really have a look and be like am I seeing pictures every day of these bodies that's like I actually don't love the way that looks or you know the way they're training or the things that they're doing like is that whole look and lifestyle and feel and everything actually appealing to you or have you just kind of adopted this mindset of like oh you know fit and shredded and lean is best really just start to think about these things so we've kind of taken this in a few different directions today like we always do (laughs) but like I said I really just want people to start thinking a little bit differently like we're so used to thinking the same way training the same way eating the same way working towards the same goals whatever it might be and it's always just worth having the like intelligence or emotional intelligence even and the awareness to tap in and be like is this actually what I want do I want something else is this working for me like all of these things this is what I want more than anything in eat like ruby like I will support any goal like so long as it's healthy but (laughs) I will support any one and any goal so long as it really is aligned with that person and it actually makes sense and it's a feel good thing for that person to go after. Coming back to <laughs> train like queens, having the, the deficit break in the winter and all of those things. One of the biggest things I advise here, like I said, whether you actually apply for train like queens and come into that space or you just take this sort of approach and you apply it yourself. One of the biggest shifts you want to make is, I think, focusing on more so on training than nutrition. And this is not to say that we let nutrition go to shit, but one one quote that I love, and I hope this helps explain it more, is make nutrition choices based around fueling your training program rather than making a training program based around burning off your nutrition choices. And I literally, I don't know if I heard that quote or I wrote it. I honestly cannot tell you if that's an OG or if I heard it because I literally posted that on my Instagram like four years ago. So, and then sometimes I just refer back to it because I love it. It's a really great thing to think about during a time like this. If we come away from fat loss, if we can put our focus on training and thinking along the lines of like, what are my physique goals or what are my performance goals? What are my strength goals? And then obviously, do I have the training in place for those goals? And how do I get the training in place for those goals? We almost reverse engineer from there where it's like, okay, cool. If I've got a goal to grow my glutes, I know I need to be hip thrusting, deadlifting and lunging twice a week, whatever it is. Like I'm just pulling shit out here, (laughs) but I know I need to be doing that. I've got a program in place that does that. What makes sense for me to eat before I go into the gym so I can really optimize that program? What makes sense for me to eat when I come out of the gym so I can start recovering from that program and actually get some gains? What makes sense for me to eat for the rest of the day to make sure I'm eating enough to fuel muscle gain, to build the body that I want? I hope all of this is making sense. And we can see here that, like I said with that quote, it's make nutrition choices based around fueling your training program as opposed to keeping a big focus on nutrition. If we fall into any sort of bad habits or we quote, you know, fall off track here, that second part of that quote was rather than making a training program based around burning off your nutrition choices. And this is what we see people again, you know, air quotes falling off track with nutrition and then being like, shit, I need to train. I need to do cardio. I need to walk. I need to hit the gym. Those two different concepts where it's like nutrition is the big focus. I'm dieting hard. I'm pushing hard, whatever. And then I feel like I need to make sure I'm pushing training to back that up or to counteract the things that I've maybe, you know, stuffed up with my nutrition. As opposed to if we can make that shift and make training the focus for a few months and then just naturally start to reverse engineer and make our choices like what makes sense for me to eat to support this? I want to hit these big lifts. I want to start to see my shape change. I want to, even if it's if it's a performance goal like running or, you know, I've been doing with my own training things like battle ropes and the assault bike and it's friggin' hard. It's so hard. And when I'm going into that session, I'm like, I need to eat for this or I'm going to drop dead on that assault bike. Like 
It's just how it is. So you naturally just start thinking, what's the best choice I can make here to fuel this? And then you get home and you're like, I'm starving, like I'm spent, whatever. The more education we have, we start thinking like, I need some protein, I need some carbs. And then again, when it's like, comes to dinner time, I'm just naturally starting to think like, I just need a big ass plate of like meat, potatoes, salad. Like I need a big feed after that session. And equally, if I'm going to hit a big session tomorrow, as opposed to, you know, people either thinking like, how can I make my dinner like as low a calorie as I can, or can I afford to get takeaway or whatever? Like people take that nutrition focus in any direction, whether it's good or bad, but it is that really big focus on like, oh, how can I best spend these calories? Whereas when we shift that focus to training, it's more just like, What makes sense for me to eat right now? What would feel good for me to eat right now? What's going to feel good in the gym tomorrow? You know, if you had a massive pig out night of greasy food, I don't even know, but like, and you're going to wake up early and train, there's a chance you're going to wake up and be like, oh, probably don't feel too great. Equally, if you were like, how can I keep my dinner as low a calorie as possible and have a really restricted dinner? Again, we wake up and it's like, you want to send it with these triple digit hip thrusts and you're fucking starving. So (laughs) this is what I really want people to start thinking about is if you can relate to a lot of this stuff, really finding that time during the winter. And I've I've spoken about this a lot, but winter can just be a good thing because people naturally want to focus a little little bit more on fat loss or tightening things up around summer, around New Year's, around all of that. So sort of by default, it leaves us with a really good, you know, four to six months in winter, sort of being like April through to August, September-ish where it's like, okay, cool. If I know other times of the year, I am going to really fine tune and focus on fat loss and whatever. This is a good time to do something else and to just embrace all of these things that I've just rattled off. (laughs) So I hope a lot of that made sense, guys. I'm sure it's all starting to make sense and click and you're thinking, yeah, shit, Rubes is ranting again. (laughs) Like I said, I really just want people to start thinking about this, especially if you can relate to what we said at the start, being the sort of person that does love nutrition and training and wants to get the most out of it. We really just want to start thinking about what is the next step for you? What is the next level for you? Like I said, so often we have good habits and we're in good shape and this is not a bad thing at all, but equally we can start asking ourselves like, do I want to have better habits? Do I want to be in better shape? Do I want to do something new? Do I want to do something that I haven't done before? Do I want to progress in a way that I haven't progressed before? Whether it is performance, muscle gain, habits, mindset, whatever, all of the things. We just want to start thinking about that. So if all this does apply to you and you're thinking you do just want to send it through the winter and you do want a wicked community vibe to do it in, I would absolutely advise to apply for Train Like Queens. Like I said, the reason I wanted to create that space is so that if we do go through all of these feels physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever, we're in a group of women that are all doing the same thing and all going through the same stuff, progressing towards the same goals and really get it. Like we just want to get it. I would love to see, I would actually love to see who of you guys is listening to these episodes and who it's resonating with. So if anything here did resonate with you, like please take your screenshots, upload them on your stories, tag Eat Like Ruby. I love knowing that there are gals out there who are just picking up what I'm putting down. So please do that and make sure you have subscribed and are following the show because there's plenty more juice to come.